Hey everyone and welcome back to Remember This Tech. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and a mini review of a new motherboard that I just got. I'm going to use this in an upcoming build so there's a reason behind me getting this. What is it? Well it's Asus Prime A520M the Dash A2. It has a number of features that support the newer 5000 series chip and also supports the Ryzen 4000 and the Ryzen 3000. Now that's important to note because albeit that the 520 is a in-between board from the 450 and the 550, some of the 520 boards are not created equal in all of their features and functions and CPU support. This board is based on the AM4 socket and I mentioned before that it supports the Ryzen 3000 series. Now some of the B550 motherboards and a few as far as I can tell of the 520 boards don't support the 3000 series chip. So if you want to upgrade to a slightly newer platform and you wanted to grab a 520 or 550 board, you got a 3000 series chip and you want to upgrade it later, you may or may not have support for your chip on that 550 platform. But this one supports it. So you have an upgrade path from 3000, 4000 to 5000 series AMD Ryzen chips. So keep that in note, that's a positive. One thing you've got to know, a downfall of this board is that if you plan on overclocking or try to overclock the onboard GPU of certain Ryzen chips like the 3200G or maybe even the 5600G, don't plan on it because most of the A520 motherboards don't have that ability. It'll see your chip as non-overclockable or locked on these budget or lower end motherboards so to speak and that goes with the a320 motherboards as well but i know if you go with the 450 the b550 you can get in there and increase the cpu frequency by default and in most times the integrated graphics um, the, the Vega 7, Vega 8, Vega 11, whatever they have. So that is a huge thing to note if you're interested in getting one of these boards. Not to say that it isn't a good board in general for someone who's on a budget who, or who doesn't plan to overclock at all. So keep that in mind. Just by looking at the box, it says right off the bat, Windows 11 ready. We all know that until you get your system up and running, may or may not actually be certified Windows 11. And that's up to Windows to decide. And they're cutting chips, chipset and chip support by the day. A few of the features that it has on the back, it's got four USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. It's got two USB 2.0 ports, display port, one HDMI port, a D sub port, Gigabit Realtek NIC, one audio jack, and one PS2 combo port for whatever reason for legacy keyboard support. On the graphics port, I mentioned those. It's got the Realtek uh, ALC887887 7.1 surround chipset support. This is another positive thing that I see right off the bat for this board. It supports four, four DDR4 DIMM slots. It has those on this board. Some A520M boards only have two, so that's gonna limit how much capacity for DDR4 you can put in your board. So that's another positive for this board. And it says that it can support 128 gig of DDR4, and it can support up to 4,800 megahertz DDR4 RAM in case you want more performance. Some of those higher end, uh, the 3D chips or whatever, take advantage of more bandwidth. So that might be good in a way if your board can support it, but those higher speed RAMs cost more money. It has one M2 slot and four SATA six gigabits per second ports, which is okay. I would like to see another SATA, a couple more SATA on there, or even another 
uh, M2 slot for NVMe. I saw a Gigabyte board that had two NVMe slots. So that might have been a plus on that for that board. But it does have a number of expansion capabilities on this board. And it was higher, a slightly higher rated board than the Gigabyte. How much did I pay for this? I'll tell you at the end of the video, so stay tuned. It has five times protection three circuit protection and surge protection uh, on the board per however it does it. CPU temperature monitoring integrated uh, from your fan speeds also as well for monitoring. And it has the Aura Sync, Asus Aura Sync for your RGB. And it says right here on the box, if I hadn't mentioned before, AMD Ryzen 5000 desktop ready. Does it come with a pre-flash BIOS to support those chips? I hope it does, because it says it does. And let's see what's in the box without further ado. We have the motherboard and a standard anti-static bag. Okay, we'll get into that in a moment. You know, this is a rarity nowadays, but it comes with a full motherboard manual and a quick motherboard layout guide, which if you're like me, sometimes you're fumbling around and you need to see where things are on the board. Well, you got it right here. And this is cool because it might only cost a few cents, but a lot of motherboard manufacturers are cutting this out. And it's a full manual with all the pinouts and all the functions and the features. That's a plus, right? And the bottom of this case, another rarity everyone another rarity this is the chipset support driver DVD now that that never comes with any boards anymore right you never see that so if you're trying to get your system set up and your internet's flaky you got your basic drivers right here folks that's cool and a flimsy IO shield which what do you expect it's an IO shield Got a standoff and a NVMe screw, which is minuscule, don't lose that. Um, QR codes for uh, ASUS control center and downloads and activation. And just uh, another safety information card. And stuffed away in this cardboard here, we have two SATA connectors one is a right angle and one is straight. So, not without its pluses, right? I mean, that's pretty cool. Let's put this stuff back and let's get into the motherboard. One minor drawback of this board, getting into a few cons here, is that it only supports PCI Express 3.0 for its NVMe and its, well, its graphics. Now, some of you may be like, oh, I gotta have 4.0, but do you? You know, you can still put in the latest graphics card and it will suffer a bit, but will you notice a difference? And speed-wise for games and loading for your NVMe and such, you can still get a high 3.5, 3,000 megabits per second. Well, let's get into the specs and I'll post those in a little bit. All right, it's not taped shut. It would suck if I dropped it, right? All right, it's got like a silver and all black theme here, which is kind of cool. But you can see there's not much real estate space here, but you got your PCI Express 3.0 graphics slot, and it doesn't have the cool metal support around it for heavy, heavy graphics cards. So that's another kind of con to note. But if you're buying this board, you might not have case room because you're putting it in a small case to put a ginormous video card anyway. So you probably already thought about that. Two PCI Express slots, uh, 1X here. Small heat sink here. And there's some uh, a heat sink for the DRMs, I guess, here. As I stated before, you got four DDR4 slots, which is really cool. Um, because if you want to throw in 16 gig now, in dual channel, throw in another 16 gig later, you're good to go. Um, here's your USB header for additional USBs. And like hooking up to your front of your case, 
So even though it only has the four, um, the six USBs that I mentioned, well, you got more room for that. Here's your NVMe slot right here. And you got your standard AM4 socket here with your plastic um, connections. And here's the four SATA ports here on board and your various IO headers. And you might see right off the bat that it's lacking some of the heat sinks and fancy stuff that some of the other higher end boards might have, but it's got functionality nonetheless. You know, if you're running an entry level 50, you know, 5600G, 3400G, something like that, you're gonna be probably fine with this. On the back IO ports, you got your USB, like I mentioned, your gigabit LAN. You got VGA out, which is kind of a relic, you know, I was hoping DVI, but you do have a display port and a HDMI out port, which kind of, why didn't they put DVI? Why do you need VGA? I don't know, but that's what they got, PS2 port. And then you got your 24 pin power here, and it looks like, you know, decent VRM support there, you know. All you can do is test it. And that's what I'm gonna do in a future follow-up video. So if you aren't subscribed, make sure to subscribe and hit that like button so you won't miss this upcoming video. And you have a back plate here, standard. And you got an LED strip here. I know you can't see it, it's kinda yellow. So what did I pay for this board? This board ranges between $69 and $89. I picked it up for $75. That may be something that you might be interested in because you don't want to get into a 450, B450 board because you know support's gonna be out the window for those in a year or so. And you just can't quite cough up money for a 570 board or you don't want to go to a 550 because you got a 3000 series chip you still think is great and you want to keep it, but you want to get a platform where you can maybe get rid of that chip down the line and you still got DDR4 and you don't want to buy DDR5 yet well maybe this board is for you put your DDR4 in here put your other chip in here so you got a little decent basis for an upgrade for later on down the road and then you can throw in a you know 5600G and sell your other chip or put it into a server if you want Repurpose it. That's my ideal situation. That's what I like to do. So what do I think about this board? I've come to think of Asus as one of my go-to boards because they're pretty rock solid and stable. Knock on wood. Gigabyte, you know, it's a close second. Used to be my first runner up, but things are changing nowadays. If this upcoming test, that this little board proves is metal, maybe you could throw a system together for like under 200 bucks and have a pretty good entry low level gaming system. That's my review of the Asus Prime A520M A2 board. I hope you found this helpful and thanks for watching. Remember this tech.